Acids and Bases, Part 4, Polyprotic Acids. This video will help you to solve equilibrium problems so that you can calculate the pH of solutions with polyprotic acids. As the name infers, polyprotic acids are acids that can donate more than one proton in Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions. These are models of three common examples, including sulfuric acid, carbonic acid, and phosphoric acid. Polyprotic acids dissociate one step at a time, with the conjugate base from the first step being used as the acid in the next step, and so on. Here's the two-step dissociation equilibria for carbonic acid, along with their acid dissociation equilibrium expressions, Ka1 and Ka2. Carbonic acid is a very typical polyprotic acid in that the first dissociation constant is much larger than the second, and so on. This makes sense because removing another positively charged proton from a negatively charged ion would be increasingly more difficult. As a result, only the first dissociation step makes an important contribution to the hydrogen ion concentration and thus to the pH. In practice, this means that for finding the pH in most situations, just treat the polyprotic acid as a monoprotic acid. With these listed Ka values, calculate the pH of a 5.0 molar phosphoric acid solution. Start by listing the major species in solution. Since this is a weak acid, water and phosphoric acid molecules are the major species. Phosphoric acid dissociates according to this purple equilibrium, and we can list the initial concentrations to start our ice table. From our ice table, we can get the equilibrium concentrations in terms of x, which can be substituted into the equilibrium expression. The equilibrium expression for this first dissociation constant is shown here in yellow, and our substitutions are made in green. We can use an approximation here to quickly find x. which would be 0.19. According to the 5% rule, this approximation is good. Now that we know the hydrogen ion concentration, we can determine the pH, which for this 5.0 molar phosphoric acid solution, the pH is 0.72. What if we were also asked to find the equilibrium concentrations of phosphoric acid, dihydrogen phosphate, hydrogen phosphate, and phosphate ions. This problem has significantly more work, but it's just as simple to use solving the equilibrium expressions and the acid dissociation constants. From the previous problem, we learned that the hydrogen ion and dihydrogen phosphate ion concentrations were 0.19 molar. We can subtract, subtract the extent of the reaction from the initial phosphoric acid molecule concentration to get its equilibrium concentration, 4.8 molar. To determine the hydrogen phosphate concentration, we need to look at the dissociation equilibrium for the second step of this three-step process. An ice table organizes our initial concentrations, change in concentrations, and equilibrium concentrations. Notice that the initial H plus concentration is significant now because of the first dissociation. In orange here, we see the equilibrium expression for the second dissociation using the given Ka2 value. We substitute we approximate and we can solve for x, which is 6.2 times 10 to the negative eighth molar. This gives us the hydrogen phosphate concentration at equilibrium. Of course, hydrogen phosphate can then dissociate further. So what about the dissociation of hydrogen phosphate? We simply repeat the process for this third dissociation reaction and we can set up an equilibrium expression for Ka3.
our equilibrium concentrations in terms of X are here in green. In yellow, we have the equilibrium expression for Ka3. We substitute the concentrations at equilibrium in terms of X. Using an approximation, we can quickly solve for X. That gives us the phosphate ion concentration. which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th molar. Notice that in each of these successive dissociation reactions, the concentration of the hydrogen ion was never significantly changed, which is why pH calculations for polyprotic acids will typically involve only the first dissociation step. Sulfuric acid, on the other hand, is a unique case. The first dissociation step for H2SO4 is the strong acid dissociation, but the second step is a weak acid dissociation. Most of the time, only the first step, the complete ionization step, is important in determining the pH of a sulfuric acid solution. If the concentration of sulfuric acid is one molar or greater, just treat it as you would a strong acid with only one acidic hydrogen. So in our example, a 1.0 molar sulfuric acid solution would produce 1.0 molar H plus in solution, so the pH would be the negative log of 1.0, which is zero. On the other hand, in dilute solutions, where the sulfuric acid concentration is less than one molar, the dissociation of hydrogen sulfate ion produces significant contributions to the total hydrogen ion concentration at equilibrium, and therefore, it influences the pH. What then would the pH of a 0 0.0100 molar sulfuric acid solution B. To solve this problem, we should consider both the initial complete dissociation of H2SO4 and the partial dissociation equilibrium that's formed between the hydrogen sulfate ion and the hydrogen and sulfate ions formed in the second dissociation step. Because of the first step, the initial concentrations of hydrogen sulfate ion and hydrogen ion will be 0 0.0100 molar. So we'll substitute those into the ice table in the I step. We can then use the extent of the reaction we can write the equilibrium concentrations in terms of X and we can use the equilibrium expression for the second dissociation step to set up an equation that we can solve for x. Because the Ka of this equilibrium is not extremely small, in fact it's larger than our initial HSO4 minus concentration, we won't be able to use an approximation. The extent of the reaction would be much more than 5% of its initial concentration. Not to fret though, we can just solve the equation and set up an a quadratic equation. Now that we have a quadratic equation, we can use the quadratic formula. We'll get two solutions for this expression, only one of which makes any sense in the context of this problem. The equilibrium concentration of hydrogen ions is therefore the sum of the produced the sum of hydrogen ions that were produced from each of the two dissociation steps, 0 0.0100 molar from the first step and 0 0.0045 molar from the second step. The pH then is the negative log of 0 0.0145, which is 1.84. Thank you for watching this video on finding the pH of acids with more than one acidic hydrogen. If you have difficulty with this material, watch this video again or refer to the matching pages in your textbook. Leave a question in the comments if you have any questions. Next time, we'll consider the acidic and the basic properties of salts in aqueous solutions.